Good morning, everyone. Today, what I want to show you is uh, basically how to use uh, Red Screen software for performing a very simple analysis. Uh, we will be using the Red Screen software in viewer mode, so license is not required in here. And uh, the idea is simply to show how do we can how we can use the software for performing a simple analysis of a, a grid connected solar PV system in Saudi Arabia. All right. So the uh, now this is. Uh, the project that we have and here we will be using the red screen software for performing uh, three to four tasks uh, from the project right so in terms of uh, the uh, the selection of pv modules so although here it can be done independently of the software but it makes sense to uh, look up the database of pv panels available on the red screen software and then uh, compare three among them simply because the ones that uh, comes out to be the winner you will be using that module for performing the uh, the further calculations, which are estimating the uh, the uh, the overall energy output for a given location, and based on that, calculating the number of panels that you will need, and uh, then you will further use it for uh, estimating the cost of the system, uh, and the payback time, and also lastly, you will look at how much uh, greenhouse gas emissions are you saving. Right. So this is essentially what we want to do through the Red Screen software. So let's go ahead and uh, start the software then. So the red screen software, uh, you just have to operate it in viewer mode. We, we're not working with the paid version here. So once you click continue in the viewer mode, uh, the tab opens up and this is what you're looking for. Now there are several ways in which we can go ahead and uh, look at uh, implementing the uh, our project, but the easiest one is to pick up a case study and then use it for further work, right? So we'll just pick up a related a case study. So there are a lot of case studies available here uh, for different systems, wind turbines, photovoltaic systems, uh, heaters, pumps, lights, you name it, okay? Now some of these are not, of course, available in the, uh, in the free version, right? But uh, for us, uh, one photovoltaic study is available in the free version, and we're just going to move ahead with it and uh, customize it for our location. So let me just double click it uh, to open it up. Here, uh, since we are doing this uh, study in Saudi Arabia, uh, we'll have to pick up a location in Saudi Arabia, right? So here you can pick any location you want. Uh, I'm just going to pick Dehran uh, uh, for uh, reference, right? So just click this globe, and then uh, the screen opens up. Just put the location you need. I'm going to put that on. Uh, it's going to show multiple options. The on Saudi Arabia is the one that we're looking for. So once you click that, you have to click this uh, button here, the, the button with the tick mark, to uh, paste this data onto your uh, uh, onto the software. So you click this, and everything related to the run now is uh, uh, is loaded. So the latitude, the the longitude, the the climate, the horizontal radiation, everything, right? Whatever we need. So, in fact, more than what we need, right? So, uh, now once this is done, we move on to the facility part. Okay, so we have selected the location, uh, and uh, keep note of the latitude of the run, twenty six point two seven or twenty six point three. We will be using it uh, in a bed, right? So next, we move on to the facility. Now here. You can name whatever you want. Uh, it's really uh, nothing. It's not going to change anything in here for study. I'm just, I'm just going to call it uh, grid connected solar PV. Right. OK, so we move to the key part, which is the energy. Uh, in the energy, uh, since we also want to do a payback uh, time analysis and we want to do the cost analysis, we need to Im uh, implement uh, or we need to input the cost of electricity within Saudi Arabia. Now, uh, as discussed within the uh, within the project, uh, the we will be assuming the cost of electricity to be uh, 0.25 uh, SAR per kilowatt hour. So first, we will change this rate from dollar per megawatt hour to dollar per kilowatt hour, so that we are inputting the correct rate. And uh, further, since we are implementing this rate in, in in dollar in US dollar, not Saudi real, so you'll have to apply the uh, appropriate conversion factor, which is one Saudi real is uh, equal to 3.75 uh, SAR, right? So uh, once you convert 0 0.25 to do, 0 0.25 start to dollar, it comes out to be 0 0.067, right? So now this is the cost costing done. This will be used for calculating 
the cost of the electricity that we generate using the panel. All right. Now we move on and select the photovoltaic. Uh, we click this photovoltaic button to select the photovoltaic panel. Uh, here you go ahead with level two, and there are multiple options in the tracking mode, fixed one access to access, but the most commonly used option is the fixed option because it's, it involves almost no cost, right? You fix it and we uh, work uh, and it, it uh, uh, captures the solar energy uh, as much as possible and gives you uh, the, uh, uh, the, max, uh, the energy from it, right? Now you can also do one axis or two axis tracking for increasing the amount of uh, uh, energy captured, but of course it becomes costly and complicated, so we don't do that, right? So uh, in terms of in implementation, right? Not in terms of selecting on red screen, red screen is simple. So here we'll go with the fixed mode and uh, in terms of slope and azimuth, the slope is uh, should be selected in such a way that it reflects the latitude of your location, right? The latitude for the run was 26.3. So I'm just going to go and put 26.3 in here. And you can see that the number, the electricity exported to the grid based on whatever has been selected is 16.948, right? Now this number should be as high as possible based on your slope. You select a slope in such a way to optimize this. So just to show you, uh, if uh, if I change this from 26.3, if I make it 26, let's say, uh, the number uh, uh, changes a bit, right? If I make it, let's say 25, it increases uh, a bit more. So basically you start with uh, the slope of, uh, uh, you start with uh, the latitude and then you tune around to get, uh, to maximize the number, right? So if I select, let's say zero degrees, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's much, much smaller, right? So if you go back to uh, 26.3, we get 16.948, and then you can tune around, right? 25, here's 965, slightly higher, maybe 24, 974, even higher, go 23, 979, 22, 981, play around with it to maximize it. As long as you are in the right range, that's still fine, right? In terms of the azimuth, we will select a zero azimuth. Okay. Now the next step is basically uh, to select the appropriate panel. So here, this is what I uh, was talking about the database. So once you click this, it shows up a uh, huge uh, number of panels from available from different companies with different model numbers, right? So uh, I would highly recommend that you look up this and then select uh, three panels from here, do a comparison, and then use one of them for uh, for further. Uh, analysis. So here uh, for analysis, maybe let's just select um, Gentech, right? Okay. Uh, and it also has many models. Uh, maybe you just select the first one, uh, the monosilicon model, right? So it has a capacity of 255 uh, uh, watt per unit per, per each solar panel. So for uh, for simple analysis, let me select 100 units, okay? Uh, so it's a capacity of 25.5 uh, kilowatt, and then you click this paste data button. Once you do that, then based on the selected uh, manufacturer, based on your selected panel, uh, all the relevant data is loaded up. So for 100 units, right, uh, it's going to require uh, an area of 162.4 meters square, and it's going to generate 40 megawatt hour of electricity to the grid. Now this number, uh, the number of panels that you uh, need will have to be tuned according to the electricity that you need to generate. So, for example, uh, as we discussed uh, in the uh, in, in the project, basically, if you're looking for uh, uh, matching the energy requirement of uh, ten homes, basically, you have to look at what is the energy requirement for each home, right? So, if let's say for uh, for a given home, the uh, the energy out uh, the energy uh, requirement came out to be, as an example, let's say maybe uh, 4,000 kilowatt hour, right? It's just a very small number. Certainly, it should be larger than this, okay? If it came out to be uh, 4,000 kilowatt hour uh, on an annual basis, right? So these are all uh, on an annual basis, right? So here you can say for 10 homes, the number should be. 40,000 kilowatt hour or should be 40 megawatt hour. Now for 40 megawatt hour, which is what we are generating here, we need 100 panels of Gentile. If this number changes, if this number is higher, 
or lower or whatever it is, then you'll have to scale the number of panels accordingly to get the right amount of uh, electricity generated from the grid. OK, so that's that's an important point. That's something to remember. The other thing is as you change around the number of units, the uh, the solar collector area will change, which is basically the area on which you have to install the panels. And also uh, you should also play around with the, the initial cost. So the initial costs are going to be different depending on the capacity of the installation, depending on uh, you know what is uh, how many panels are you installing, right? If it's a very small um, uh, installation, then things are a uh, bit on the costly side. So let's go here and uh, look at this. So for uh, in our case, we are installing something about 25.5 mega uh, kilowatt. Sorry, right? 25.5 kilowatt as as shown here. Okay. So let's go and let's click this button so to see the cost database. Now here it shows uh, different cost for different installations. So if you're looking at something with tracking without tracking you can see the numbers are different and the numbers keep on reducing as you go to larger and larger capacities now we're looking for something in the uh, uh in the 25 kilowatt range which is more closer to the 10 kilowatt so we will select this number okay select this number paste data in here so the number is now updated and it'll tell you the initial cost 56,100 for installing these many panels now this is all is done uh the the cost of electricity is also mentioned here, 0.067, which is uh, relevant for Saudi Arabia. Now, uh, once you select the appropriate panel, once you select the appropriate amount of uh, uh, units to match the uh, uh, the energy uh, requirement, uh, the energy that you need to produce to meet the uh, needs of 10 homes, then you move on to the next step, right? So here we just have two more steps left. Uh, one is the emissions where we look at the emission factor. Uh, so here this tells you the emission factor in terms of tons of CO2 emitted per megawatt hour, right? So this is the current situation in Saudi Arabia and it changes based on, of course, it changes from region to region. If you input another country, it's going to be different, right? So uh, now you can either take this number from here or you could take it from the reference that I mentioned to you. Ultimately, what we are looking for is to calculate the uh, the emission reduction that is possible by implementing a solar uh, PV system. So here, uh, essentially what you got to do is uh, if we were not having a solar PV system, then based on the current grid, uh, 0 0.5557 tons of CO2 are being emitted for every megawatt hour of electricity generated. Now, if you have a, if you have a solar PV system, okay, which can generate, let's say, 10 megawatt hour, okay, then basically the uh, uh, instead of generating the 10 megawatt hour from fossil fuel source, which would give you this quantity of uh, CO2 emission. You're doing that from solar PV, which is not emitting anything uh, essentially during its operation. So that means that the greenhouse gas emission that you were able to reduce is simply the emission factor 0 0.5557 multiplied by 10, the, the amount of energy you're producing, right? So it's basically 5.557 tons of CO2 is what you're able to save by, uh, by implementing this uh, solar PV project. So that's all we are looking for. We are only looking for this particular number. You can get this number from here. You can get this number from uh, any other paper. It's your choice. This is a simple calculation that you have to uh, do for your case, right? And uh, uh, you can mention how much uh, electricity, you're, uh, how much uh, tons of CO2 you're saving it, okay? Now uh, let's move on to the last part, which is the finance part, which uh, talks about the payback time and the cost of the system, right? So here, when you click the finance tab, uh, we'll use all the default parameters. So inflation rate 2%. The project life uh, for solar PV project is 25 years. So you'll leave it as default. Based on the cost we selected, based on the size of the system, uh, the cost came out to be 56,100 for the number of panels we had. Change the number of panels, things also change, right? So this is the initial cost uh, and uh, uh, in terms of how much electricity we are generating, we are generating enough electricity to uh, give us $2,686 based on the electricity rate of 0.25 star per kilowatt hour that we select. Okay, so this is your savings. This is your cost. Uh, uh, and in terms of payback, you're simply looking at how much time it takes for you to get your money back, uh, the initial investment back. 
and uh, we'll again use whatever is uh, given in terms of uh, in red screen. These are all very reasonable numbers uh, and uh, you can just pick it up directly here. So you're looking for a simple payback time of 20.8 years or 20.9 years, which is still lower than the project lifetime. So you will not be in losses, but uh, it is a reasonable project, right? It's not something that's uh, the that has a very short payback period. So maybe if you change the panel, if you uh, if you pick up a different panel, if you uh, in increase the capacity of the installation, the uh, the cost per unit will come down and maybe you'll be able to get your money back sooner, right? So this is all what we need to do. And uh, that's the end. If you have any further questions, please, uh, please feel free to get back to me. Thank you.